Uh, next item is the financial report and that's got a recommended motion on page 89 and would someone like to move and or second the motion? Moved by Councillor Cordover, second by Councillor Reet. Councillor Cordover doing a power of work tonight in Councillor Fox's absence. We appreciate it. Councillor Cordover. Thank you, Mayor. This is the financial report and it's um, fairly fairly good news, I guess, uh, and I'm going to ask the author to comment on it uh, in a moment, but my initial take from this is that our rates are $112,000 over budget, with the general rate being $71,000 over, and the garbage rate being $43,000 over. Um, the statutory fees and fines are $230,000 over budget, uh, due primarily to planning fees of $209,000 over budget due to greater than expected planning applications. User fees are $217,000 over budget. Uh, grants recurrent were $270,000 over budget, primarily due to grant income carried forward 2019-20 under the new accounting standards and a new grant of $96,000 for community facilities upgrades. So before I'd like to throw to Mr Breen to explain some of these, uh, I guess to account for, for why they're so far over budget, I guess the, the take home message for me is that we were all responsible fiscal manage, managers when it came to this COVID disaster. We knew that it would significantly impact our budget. Indeed it has. I think it is probably too early to say how much it has impacted us in the long term. But for all intents and purposes, my understanding is that council is travelling really well, that we've been very responsible, that we've been quite frugal, and that people really like living and working and, and recreating in our municipality because the development applications are through the roof, despite living through a global pandemic that we haven't seen in 100 years. So, um, Mr Breen, if you'd be so kind, uh, are, there any, um, are there any things that uh, took you by surprise in this report? Mr Breen. Uh, yeah, through you, Mayor. Um, yeah, look, essentially, I, I agree with Councillor Cordova. Um, this is a, a good result for this year. Middle, we did have uh, quite conservative budgets. Um, we put our budgets together uh, April, May last year. It was, it was a very uncertain period of time with the, uh, the, the COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, so, consequently, um, there was a lot of things were, that we closed down at the time, the Sports Centre being one of those. Uh, and we really didn't know, did not have a time frame for the sports centre to get up and going again. So there were some uh, uh, conservative predictions in regards to uh, fee income in particular, uh, which, uh, as you would be aware now, the sports centre was up and going in July at a slightly reduced capacity, but really did pick up to full capacity very quickly. And what we thought would take six months was really up and going in about two or three months. So certainly that's had a big impact. Uh, probably the surprising one is the, uh, the planning fees. There was an expectation that things would slow down. We didn't see it early on. Thought, oh, perhaps it was just um, uh, developments and, and uh, applications in the pipeline. But uh, I think the event, uh, introduction of the, the home builder grants, uh, certainly kept things going. And uh, I think there's still uh, I discussions this week with. Uh, uh, the development manager, and, and there still is an expectation this will continue on through the next 12 months. So uh, uh, I think that's been a, a good result. So I think we are well positioned. I think on the other side, um, we did talk early on about the efficiency dividend. We've been able to deliver on that. Uh, we've kept our expenses under control uh, quite comfortably. So I think you know, there's no doubt our revenue will be up. Our expenses uh, will be either on or below budget. Uh, and uh, I think we'll produce a result that will be interesting. will be close to being in line with our loss associated with the Taswater dividend. So if we didn't have a Taswater dividend, then I imagine we would have been getting pretty close to break even. Thank you, Mayor. One extra question is uh, that in 4.2 on page 89, Council's cash and investments amount to $10.5 million at the end of December, which is up $4 million from the December 2019 figure due to increases in interest-free borrowings. How does this compare to, historically, Kimbra's uh, cash position? Are we in a, a very safe zone, or are we, um, in a historical context, still tracking behind the mark, so to speak? Mr Breen. Yeah, through you, Mayor. Uh, look, yeah, certainly $10 million is a pretty comfortable level of cash for, for this council. I think it's certainly a number that around about that um, $8, $9, $10 million is, is a comfortable level and one that we would generally aim for. 
um, we see you now the, the, uh, the perhaps the uh, early part of sort of the, the early part of uh, 2020 um, and going into the later part of 2020 our cash reserves got down to seven eight million dollars uh, and that's a bit on the low side uh, we are fortunate at the moment that we have um, the uh, interest-free loans we also have approved an, an additional nine million dollars in interest-free loans which um, we need to take up before June so uh, council can expect a paper over the next uh, two or three months um, uh, allowing us to go and grab those funds and uh, so we'll have a at the end of the financial year, I imagine we'll have a very comfortable level of cash uh, supported by those interest-free loans. Thank you, Mayor. I think this is really comforting to hear. And I think that we as a council were right to have a risk appetite that was um, significantly constrained because of the uncertainty that's inherent with a global pandemic. Um, Mr Breen, do you think that we're now at a point where we can start to be confident and maybe a bit more flexible um, with respect to how much this council spends? Uh, in your assessment, hindsight's 2020. If we had known now, then, uh, should we have been more, uh, should we have been less conservative with um, how frugal we were? Mr. Breen. Hey, uh, through you, Mayor. I guess essentially, Council is still uh, producing a, a pretty substantial uh, underlying deficit for the year, and that's certainly not a position that we would like to be in. Uh, originally, in our long term financial plan, this year was to be the year where we continue, We started with a sustainable underlying surplus and continued on to the future. Uh, there's no doubt the, uh, that the COVID-19 pandemic has, has, has had an impact uh, and uh, certainly the loss of test water dividends uh, has had a, quite a substantial impact. Um, in a week or so's time, we'll be talking about the long-term financial plan. I think that's an opportunity to have a bit of a look at casting forward. Um, we're certainly trying to put forward a plan that allows council to get to an underlying surplus within three years, and that's when a lot of these interest-free borrowings will start to, um, to, to will mature, and, and, and we've either got to repay them or we've got to start paying interest. So well, I think that's probably the opportunity then to have a bit of a discussion about um, the finances moving forward and, and what opportunities there are within the council. Thank you, Mr. Brown, and thank you, Matt.